Hey guys, Christopher Marlowe here. I wanted to come at you with a really useful bit of Reaper uh, workflow uh, that lets you use some uh, stock plugin resample Matic 5000 in sort of a new way, uh, sort of an easier way, and definitely a more intuitive, fun sort of way for free. It's by a cool guy on the Reaper forums called MPL. He makes so, so many scripts. And I think this is sort of like the, the, the magic bullet for when I use drum one shots in Reaper. And I thought you should know about it. So uh, here we go. For a long time, I've been working with drum samples, like one hit, one shot samples. And I never really kind of got to where I wanted to be like like a workflow. One thing I tried doing actually for a while is this transfuser plugin with using drum samples. You can actually just import your own. You can drop in wave files or there's lots of other uh, kits in the, in the the factory uh, content. This is a very slick plugin. Mm, but it's oh it's very um kind of I want to say locked in. I wish there was something like an Ableton drum rack, but but like for Reaper. I wanted something with stock plugins, but the thing is with Reaper, the stock plugin is RS5K, also known as resample matic 5000. It's not really a joy to work with, let's say. And it's, but it's, it's very simple, it's very basic. I like the limitations of it, because limitations uh, enable you to be creative. And then I came across a Reaper blog tutorial and I will link you to that. And that was for this thing right here. And you see at the top it says MPL RS5K Manager. This is version 2.12. It's probably, maybe it has an update, I'm not sure. MPL is the name of the guy who makes it. Here he is on the Reaper forums at forum.cacos.com. This is the MPL script thread. I will also link this. You, you, in order to get his stuff, you want to download Repack. It's at R-E-A-P-A-C-K -E dot com. Choose your, your OS, and then just run the installer. You get this browse package thing. So, what, for example, here in, in my little interface, you go to uh, Extensions, down to Repack, and then Browse Packages. I believe MPL is uh, one of the stock packages that's included. Like, you don't have to add it after the fact and so you just if you type in rs5k we have the rs5k manager you right click i can update here but you can i think you can it'll have an install button and then you go down and click apply or okay and it'll install it for you and the way you find it when you first open it up is you actually go to your actions list so you go to the actions menu list and you go to show action list you just search in your actions list for rs5k manager here we are, the script MPL RS5K manager. This is background, I'm not sure why. Anyway, I set my own custom shortcut to, to reach it. I have shift plus R. You can do whatever you want. So you just go down to add shortcut here, add, and then you, and then uh, close. So if I tap uh, shift plus R, then it comes up. This is so slick. What this does is it is a manager interface for a bunch of different instances of resample matic so if i right click on any of these i can go float linked effects it will show me that instance and as you can see over here i have all of these different instances of resample matic so the thing is even if the script is no longer being updated it won't matter because all it does is it lets you uh very quickly instantiate Resample Matic with uh, very specific uh, settings very, very quickly. The cool thing about this is it's sort of, um, in a way, it's kind of future proof. Like in the way that, for example, Air Windows uh, plugins are like designed to be. Uh, but this is sort of by virtue of its functionality, which is actually not to give you some sort of new like software that holds all the samples, all it does is it kind of, it tells Resample Matic to open up here, 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 and here, 
and it, it you can look at these and through grids and things and, and control lots of parameters through here, but it's sort of a controller for a bunch of RS5K instances. And what it also does is it, in this mode, right, it actually, I think in all the modes, yeah, because all of them are essentially the same, but, but I'll go into that in a second. It constrains the sample to one MIDI note. And basically what that, what that does for you is it means you can just go and like sequence everything in this MIDI sequencer. So it's just all right there. And since it's using RSA, okay, you can see the names of the samples. So that's also nice. And and you and so now I don't I don't even need to use the manager. I could just go into each RS5K and tweak anything I want, or I can tweak the you know the the, the sample points uh, here. But it's so handy to have something like this because I can do uh, I believe that's solo and mute. Um. Yeah, you can even see right there, I just soloed that. And it muted that, by just bypassed the effect, I believe. And I like this view because it's like the Ableton Live Drum Rack. But you have several other views. Uh, if you go to, yes, the, the little, I want to say like sideways arrow or sideways carrot. And then we go, I want to say, no, we go key options. We have um, layouts down here. I have mine as Ableton Live Drum Rack or S1 Impact. It's a four by four grid. You also have keys. You have the Korg Nano Pad, which is eight by two. So that'll be like your pad of 16 little MPC style drum pads. A push, eight by eight, so lots of samples. 8x8 eight eight segmented and vertical. I don't know all of what these means. Uh, the only other one I have done is the keys, which will give you like a piano style keyboard layout. If you're, which is handy if you're trying to manipulate these these things on a on a MIDI controller, which I just did there for a second. But Yeah, so it, it's pretty dead simple, but also it has all these fun things like, I'll put it back on drum rack. Uh, like if you click on a sample, it brings up all these like gain, pan, pitch, ADSR envelope, which is, it's actually, it's just manipulating all of these things in the individual. Um, so I'll point myself to wherever this is because it's a solo. And so, I think we could probably see this happen in real time if I put these up here. So if we change the attack, it should in theory be moving that. Yeah, it was uh, just inside the resamplematic. As you go, my computer's being laggy, but it should do this like pretty snappily if your computer is behaving itself. Loop, start, loop, end, all these various things. We have some really cool things that just add another dimension to this though. The, if you hit effects, I'll unsolo this. If you hit the little effects word right here, your sample jumps out of this and notice it's green now we've now instantiated a whole new track and i'm actually going to put this inside the folder because i have this drum bus as a folder parent track and these with the folder children because it's going through some um distortions oops uh, but so now if i click on this we have one sample here all by itself now I might want to turn this volume down to match these guys. Like these are pretty, these are turned down usually. I might want to adjust those. <clears throat> and so, but if you wanted to then mix all of your drums individually, you can just 
very quickly, bam, bam, get all of your samples together inside of a folder, for example, or really wherever you want because they're each on their own track. And also, if you wanted, you could move. This is something I sort of thought of. If you wanted to make it have its own MIDI sequences and not have them all be on one like master sequence here, you can actually, as it is right here, move this down here. And so now, I don't even know if this hat has any, <laughs> uh, because this is the hat 14. Yeah, it actually doesn't have any samples sequenced in the main sequence, so it's not going to do any sound. But if I move a different one that, for example, does, I'm not even... Yeah. Well, anyway, what the idea is you can actually move this down and it'll just play the, 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 you know, the sample that you want to hear. But then you can just change this however you like because it's just got this one here on this one MIDI note. And you could do that. You could copy and paste the, the MIDI thing several times over and be very quickly in a situation where you have all of these separate drum hits on their own tracks each with their own set of sequences, so you can you can remove the hat sequence from here, and that's and it's a lot more workflow workflow friendly if you're doing like a sort of a almost like a beat making kind of a style of workflow, like you see often in FL Studio, where guys will take a uh, snare drum, for example, and put it on its own track, and then sequence w when in the track that hits. So it, you can get a little granular, really easily get granular with it because it's all on different tracks instead of having just the one sequence um, up here. Anyway, that's not very, not, I didn't explain that very well, but uh, I, yeah, I just wanted to point you towards that, this guy. And also uh, do be sure to, um, if you can, uh, you could donate because he has a PayPal button here because he does so many cool things. You can see all of these other things he's doing, for example. I think it said on the repack he has, I believe, the re on the repository list, which you can get up at the, here, this, this little button up here. He has 301 scripts. Seems like a lot. The only guy with m more than that seems to be x -Grame. although I'm not actually sure. No, because there are so many cool people making cool things for Reaper for just anyone to use for the community. And I love it so much. But with that, I have been Christopher Marlowe, as usual. You already know. And it is now 1022 on January 7th, 2020. I have to get to other things. Take care.